Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this week's Take and Make Kit from Manlius Library for Teens and Tweens. This week, we'll be making felt hand warmers, and we'll be doing dot mandala painting. Let me show you what will be in your kit. Um, for the painting, you will have a canvas, a black canvas, a variety of things with round ends, a chopstick, some toothpicks, sandwich picks, q-tips, a couple of pencils, and in a little paper bag, mine is out free, in a little paper bag you'll have a piece of felt with three straight pins with round edges. We're actually going to take one of those and attach it to the eraser of one of your pencils for another round edge, okay? And also for the painting you have a small bag of paints. For the hand warmers, you'll have a pattern, which you might recognize as um, a character from Among Us with the body and the backpack and the visor. Some, there should only be two, some black embroidery floss, a bag of rice, about a third cup. Again, a piece of felt with a couple of straight pins, a long needle, and this funny thing is a needle threader. It'll make it easier to thread the needle. Also one piece of colored felt and one piece of white. This is for the visor, okay? We're gonna set the felt and other hand warmer things aside for now because we're gonna start with the painting. Now, in your kit, you will have received a black canvas. But I thought I would take advantage of this to show you a way to create your own. Mine is actually a white canvas that I had previously painted something else on and I just covered it in black paint. And I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do one more coat right now to prepare this canvas for painting for Dot Mandala. So I've got my black paint. It's just regular black acrylic paint. And I'm just using a bowl a little black paint in a bowl and then set that aside. So if you have a painting that or a canvas that you've maybe used for something and you want to paint over it or you're just ready to not have that painting and you want to use that canvas over again it's really easy to just paint over it and you can do this with any color. I happen to be doing it with black just because that's the color of the canvas that we're using. So I just have my nice wide brush and just paint over it. The trick is to keep your strokes even and smooth and to go all in one direction. Okay? You want to try to be careful not to have streaks or bubbles. You want it to be as smooth as possible, which is why I'm using a wide brush instead of a, a smaller round brush. You'll notice there's no paint brushes in your kit this week because we're not actually painting with paint brushes. Dot mandala painting is something I discovered a while back and it's basically painting with dots creating a pattern and I think it's very relaxing and it makes some really pretty artwork. You could also do this on any other color. You could do this on a regular white canvas. You could do, you could do the paint, the dot mandala. You could do it on um, paper if you wanted to create, I say this a lot, but if you wanted to create your own wrapping paper, your own gift wrap, or if you have some blank card stock, you could create some gift cards or greeting cards or just regular stationery in this this world of distance that we're living in right now, it's nice to have, nice to get mail from people. So maybe you could create some, some stationery or greeting cards and write letters to people. Okay, so we're just covering this completely with nice, smooth, even strokes. You want it to be completely covered. And this is my this is my second coat. I think two coats are going to be good. 
But once it's dry, you can always look back and see if there's any spots that need to be covered. And I think we've got it. So I've got my cup of water here, of course. Always have a cup of water when you're painting, even if you're not painting with brushes. Because you just never know. Okay, so take care of that. So there we have our black canvas. Now I'm going to let this dry completely and then I'll be back to show you how we do the dot mandala painting. Okay, so my canvas is all dry. And as you can see, I just covered it with black paint until it was completely covered. So let's move on to doing the dot mandala painting. You are gonna want a damp cloth for this, both because you could get paint on your fingers and also you might wanna um, reuse one of your, in fact, you certainly will wanna reuse some of your round-ended items. So, opening up our paints, we have, when you're using a black canvas, you really wanna use vibrant, lighter colors. So, we have pink, we have blue, we have kind of a gold, and then I also gave you a container of white. You could use this as its own for white on your um, canvas for white dots, but you can also use it to get different lighter shades of the paints that you have, okay? Okay, so to get started, the first thing you wanna do is find the center of your of your paper. You can use a ruler, you can use a straight edge. I'm just gonna use this piece of cardboard that I have on hand. And all you wanna do is line it up corner to corner. See, corner to corner. Put a little, make sure you got your corner. And put a little line with a pencil. You don't want it to be too dark, but you wanna be able to see it. I can see that. And then do the same thing corner to corner and put a little line in the middle. And then what you're going to do is find where those two lines meet, which is right there. And that is the center of your canvas. So let's open up our paints. And unlike most of the projects that we've done, this one does not use a paintbrush. It uses anything that you have in your house or that I've given you, which includes the pencils and the chopstick, which has two different size round ends and toothpicks and sandwich picks. Sandwich picks, the other end is kind of square, so we'll see how that works. Also Q-tips and uh, pencils. And I've put a round ball straight pin in the eraser to get even another round shape. Okay, so we're gonna set those aside and just pull them out as we use them. You can also use a pencil with a sharpened tip, which will give you even another size round. Okay. So the first thing we wanna do is our dot in the middle. You can follow along with the colors that I'm using or you can absolutely do your own design. If you have other colors that you wanna use, maybe you have colors from a, a previous kit that you wanna use, however you wanna do it. But I'm gonna start with my pencil. Actually, I'm gonna start with my pencil, this side of it, which is just a little bit bigger than the eraser. And you take your color, I'm gonna start with pink and you dip it in the paint and you want there to be a little extra on there, but not a lot. And we're just, important thing, up and down. So just right in the center, down and back up and you've got your dot. And see that little bubble on there? It's not really a bubble, it's a little extra paint. That means you've done it perfectly right. Now, this is where your, your wet cloth comes off. Just wipe it off and you're ready to go for another color, okay? So, I'm gonna use the toothpick and I'm gonna, or the chopstick, I'm gonna use that end of it and we're gonna go with the blue. Let's put these lights up here. Okay, 
we're going to do blue around the pink and we're going to go as close as possible without touching one and then exactly across from it two and then again halfway between and halfway between okay and then no nope, i don't think that's going to fit so we're not going to try and wiping it off with the wet cloth we're ready ready to go with a different color so let's take the narrow end of the chopstick with the gold and do a dot in between each of those blue dots one there one there and there's our layer two okay now we're gonna go for the 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 pencil eraser and we'll go back in the pink okay and we'll go right there and exactly across from it okay and then halfway it should be there And then there and then we can put two in between each of these and don't be afraid to go back over it if you need to The trick is up and down. Okay, oh, I got those two next to each other, but that's okay. I'm wiping off our pencil eraser. We'll take this one and we'll take the yellow. Now we're going to do the next row out. We're going to do it with the gold. Here and here, Oop. and then halfway between. Okay, and then we want halfway between those. Halfway between those. And then halfway between those. So oh, I did that. Broke my own rule. It wasn't up and down. There we go. And then halfway between those, which is there. And then I'm going to take a q tip. Okay. So Using the Q-tip, again, just the tip, we're going to go right between each of those. Right between. And then you can still wipe that off. But with the Q-tips, it's best to have this be your yellow Q-tip and then have a different Q-tip for the pink. We're actually going to, I'm gonna use the other end of a sandwich pick. These are the ones with the point on one end and it's flat on the other. And I'm gonna use the white. 
and I'm going to go right here around in between each of those gold ones. And you'll notice I'm getting paint in between most, if not all, of the dips. Okay? Because you really want to have a good dot. Paint. This is an art technique that I find very relaxing. I will do it with round markers. I've done it with colored pencils. I, I love to do it with paints. Now, as you can see, I got some white paint on there. So just take Q-tip and dip it in your water and roll the paint off just like that. Just roll the paint off. Okay. You can also always go back over um, any spots that you might get and touch them up. If you're painting on a black canvas, you could touch them up with black paint just to, to cover it. But that's a good way to get the paint off. Okay. So we've got the white. I'm going to set that aside. And I think we're going to do the blue. And we're going to do the blue. Q-tip, but we're going to take all the fuzz off the end because it'll be a little bit bigger. Okay, so and we're going to go right in between each of those white dots with a blue dot. Now, if you have other things in your house that are of a good size and are round and are washable, you should feel free to experiment. I'll show you what I mean in just a second. Okay, so we've got our base circle started. Now, we're going to expand it out a little bit. And we're going to do that. I'll use the cute, or I'll use the chopstick and the pink. And now remember, this is our line. So I'm a little off with that blue, but this is our center line we started. This is our middle dot, and we went on either side of it. Okay, so we're going to dip that in the pink and we're going to go from the center straight up. We're going to go one, two, that needs a little bit more. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing down here from the center straight down. We're going to go one, two, and then halfway. Between the two, even with the center dot, one, two. And again, halfway between the two, even with the center dot, one, two. Now, if you want to do one that's, that's off center or is just a bunch of patterns around, feel free to do that. Got a little pink on here. You just roll that off. I think we're actually going to extend those out three. So we'll add one more. This is one of those projects that your imagination is your only limitation. Okay. So let's take 
toothpick or a sandwich pick with blue and do one, two on either side of the pink. You shouldn't feel like you have to fill in every single space now. When you've got it finished, or not finished, but when you've when you've finished with the first step, you can always go back and fill things in. You can always add more dots later, especially these little dots. Okay, so there we go. And we'll take the other end of a sandwich pick and the gold. And we'll do one, two. Okay. show you what I mean by other things that are round that are um, that are washable that are of a size okay so what I got is just this little cap that goes on a bottle a spray bottle but it's a bigger circle that we can use so Let's take, let's take the yellow. Just like you did with um, the markers, you just dip it in the paint. You don't want too much on there. And we're gonna go this way with the big yellow dots. So we're gonna go even with this and halfway between there and do a dot. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go halfway between these two and straight across. To put a big dot. Okay, same thing here. And straight across, halfway between. There we go. So we've got a larger circle that we can work with. We'll wipe that off on our damp cloth and set that aside for possible use later. So we put our pin through the needle or through the, the eraser. So let's give that a shot with the blue. So we're going to take the blue, we're going to do this, and we're going to do, we're going to walk it right down. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And you'll see that they get smaller as they go down because the paint runs out. So now we're going to do the same thing down the other side. We're going to start on the same dot and go one, two, three, four. Oop, I squinched them too far together. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm going to give it a couple extra because I squinched them. Okay? Now we're going to turn our canvas and do that again. On this one. This is, this is one that really takes some practice. So, we start at the top of it and do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
and we'll just continue those down. Okay. Last one. And the reason we start over again with fresh paint on the same dot, which is is up even, so that they're the same on the all the way down. The goal is ultimately to have it be symmetrical. It takes a lot of practice. As you can see, it takes a lot of practice to get that symmetrical. So then we can wipe that off. And then maybe bring the white out and we'll do this. We'll walk that the white down around the blue. Okay, it really takes a lot of practice. I've been doing this for a long time. Okay. It gives it almost a 3D effect. going to in the pink cap I think we're going to pour some pink paint not a lot just a little we're going to pour some white paint because we're going to make it's it'll be the same color but it'll be a different shade so it'll keep to the same color family but it'll be lighter so we're just, very dangerous doing this over my canvas, we're just stirring the pink to get a lighter color. Okay, so there we go, we'll wipe that off. We're going to go back to the pencil with the pink. We're going to put a dot right there and right there and right there and right there and as you're doing these you can really see where the pattern is going to take you and just go with it There we go. Okay, so we're going to wipe that off. Why do you always keep a damp cloth? Now we're going to do the same thing with the blue. We're going to take the cover and put a little blue in there. 
add a little white. Stir it up. So that it's in the same color family, it's just adding the white makes it lighter. Take our Q-tip kind of smooth that down so there's no fuzzes. Take our Q-tip and we'll go here. Here and here. Okay, now wipe that off and going back to the dark blue with the same Q-tip, we're just going to go one, two, one, Missed one of the light blue. That's the light blue circle there. I was like, caught that at the last second. One, two. One, two. And finally. Okay, our pattern is really developing. So we're gonna take our pencil eraser again. And I wanna brighten it up just a smidge. So we're gonna use white. We're just gonna do a circle around. So remember going back to our straight line from the center, straight out a white dot. Same thing, straight out a white dot, straight out a white dot, and straight out a white dot. Then we're going to do it on the diagonals. So from there, straight out a white dot, a white dot. And if you always start in the center and work your way out, you'll find it much easier to keep to a um, pattern. Okay, let's wipe that off. I need to switch my damp cloth here is getting covered with paint and it's kind of cross purposes. So let's open up a clean spot on my damp cloth. I'll promptly dip it in paint. Okay. So now, last one, we haven't mixed lighter yet, is the gold. So we're going to do that. This is a thicker paint. considerably brighter and mix it up. Let's 
So what we have is really a light gold, and that's nice. So going back to our pencil eraser, and we're going to go straight out from the center. We're going to go in between each of these white dots. You want to keep it as close to halfway between the white dots as possible. The farther out you get, the more off you'll see your pattern getting, which is absolutely fine. Let me get that before it dries. I mean, I got a little dot there. So, whoop find a clean Q-tip and just roll it up off. Okay. So now we're going to take our pink. We're going to add just a little bit more white to it. that super, super pale pink. And again with the Q-tip, or I'm sorry, with the pencil eraser. Get all your gold off of it. And we're gonna do two in between each of these. There should be space in between each of these for two. And if there's not, that's all right as well. This is where it becomes obvious where you've made your halfway mark, not exactly halfway. Like there. <laughs> and there. But this one lots of space. Okay, so we've got our circle around. Now, as I said, when you see you've got these open spaces, you can always go back in, like now or later, and fill those in. So let me find, let me find a clean, actually, I'm going to use the other end of my, the other end of my chopstick, and I'm going to use it in white. And I'm just going to put a dot in the open space. That was a mistake, Dad. I shouldn't have done it. Your dot should go in that open space. And there and there okay but I am going to go back and fill that in around because I like that dot. the object is to not have your dots overlap but it doesn't always work and that's fine too so there we go we've got no dots there we can also go in and fill in some here, if we do one on either side of there, and one on either side of there. Okay. All right. 
So now we're going to use our cap again, but we're going to use it with the blue and we're going to go opposite for that one. Okay, so dip it in the blue and we're going to go back to using our straight lines here. So from the center, straight up, blue dot blue dot. Straight up from the center, blue dot, blue dot. I think on the sides we only have room for one, so we're going to go straight up from the center, blue dot. And straight up from the center, blue dot. And you see I didn't get exactly in the middle with my, my, my circle kind of caves in over here, but that's all right. All right, and then we'll do some final touches. So we're gonna leave it kind of lacy because I like I like lacy. So let's pull our pink back over with our pencil eraser, which is really one of my favorites to work with. And we're just gonna go one, two, three, one, two, three, and then at the top. Kind of a reverse walk. It's almost a half moon. Okay, and we're gonna do the same thing around each of these. One, two, three. One, two, three. When you get to the edge and you've got a pattern on one side that doesn't fit on the other, it's okay. Just continue the pattern as if it did. And just stop where you're painting, where your canvas stops. One, two. So for example, for this one, we would do the one, two, three, and then that. Okay. Or you can just leave that off. You don't have to do that part. Then we're going to take the pink and we're going to go up around. So another one, two, one, two, and then three. Okay. So one, two, one, Two, and then again, it doesn't quite fit, so three. And go back in. You can always go back in and fill in the dots that may have not been perfect. All right. Now we'll take our pale yellow with the same. And we're going to go halfway between, which should be at that white dot. And we're going to go one, two, three. Okay. One, two, three. One, two. back to using our little pin and we're going to add a little bit more white to the light blue. It didn't get quite light enough for me. I really want to brighten this up just a little bit. So let's take our blue stir stick. Make some lighter blue. Okay. 
and using our pin, we're going to walk the glue down around the outside of the top yellow. So we've done all four of those. We're going to wipe this off. And we're going to use the pink and walk down the next one. Okay. All the way. And it just gets progressively smaller as you go. Now, if you don't want to use just the same three colors, you can always mix your colors. And I'll show you. Last one. say you want to end with a flourish, you could always take your pink and mix it into your blue. Let's see what we get. Knowing my color wheel, we should get some kind of purple. I think we might have to add a little bit of white to it. Too dark. So, taking the white. Dot Mandala is all about creating your own design. If you're stressing out about it, take a step away from it. Really just came more blue, didn't that? Maybe let's add let's add our let's go all out. We'll add our light pink to it. These are clearly not going to be close it up and use them again later paints. Ooh, I think we've got some purple coming. Let's see if we can't grab just a little bit more pink. It's almost going to be a periwinkle color. Yeah. You know what? I like the swirl. So we're going to leave the swirl. And we're going to go back to using our cap. We're going to dip that in there. And I'm just going to go one there. And one there. And one there. In between each of the spokes of the wheel. It really is kind of a periwinkle color. Now, by the time you get out to the outside of this, like we are now, you'll notice that the inside for the most part has started to dry and you can double layer some of your colors. I'll show you what I mean. You want to make sure they're dry because otherwise you'll just have a smeary mess. But, so say we really like this periwinkle color, which I do. We're gonna take, let's see, we'll take this. 
stick, the, um, uh, this, the bigger end of the sandwich stick. We're going to dip it in the periwinkle, and then we're going to go here and just put a dot in the middle. And the only thing to remember is if you start a pattern in a circle, you want to continue it around the whole circle. So for example, I'm doing it in all of these pink ones. But say, for example, I wanted to do it just here. You want to make sure you do it in the middle one on each row. Okay. Okay. So there's that. Oh, it looks like I've got a spot of yellow that didn't quite... So we can add just a smidge, fill that in. Okay. All right. I'm looking to see if there's anywhere else I want to add. And I think I want to add to these pink ones. Doing it carefully. These ones aren't quite dry. It's a very, very good idea to let your painting dry before you do the, the other layer. But okay, so then maybe we take the other end of the stick or the of the pick and dip it in the blue, this light blue, and do it. Just the very center of them. Okay, and then maybe in these whites. Oops. I'm going to try to get them in the center. Continuing it all the way around to each of the same dot in the same space in the, in the circle that you're doing. Okay, so there's that. It's going to take longer for the bigger circles to dry, but you could always go back over those with another color as well. In fact, I think we're going to take this. Gold off of it. Let's see if I have any white that's salvageable. I do. So I'm going to dip it in white. And I'm going to use the bigger one to walk. One, two, three, four. It's down that way. Okay. So instead of it getting smaller, it almost gets to be like phases of the moon. I'm only going to do that on every other one. Oop. That's exactly what I didn't want to do. Don't wipe your paint off like I did. Roll it off with a Q-tip. A clean Q-tip. Okay, so one. And all right, one left, and we might actually just have room for that. 
Okay, so there you go. Let's see, what does it need? It needs something. It needs some pink. Need some pink. It just needs a pink. Something around these lonely periwinkle dots. Okay. So there you have it. Dot Mandala painting. It's messy and it's so fun. Okay, I'm gonna clean up a mess here and then I'll show you how to make the hand warmer part. Okay, moving on to making the hand warmers. The first thing you wanna do is with a pair of scissors, you wanna cut out your patterns. Now, if you decide you don't wanna do an Among Us hand warmer, you are welcome to make yours any shape you would like. I would stick with something similar to this size just because it's really the perfect size for a hand warmer. And also if you make anything too much bigger, you won't have enough rice unless you want to use some of your own. Okay, so we've got the body. And it says cut two. That means we're going to cut two out of the orange belt. And here's the visor. The visor, we're going to cut one, and we're going to cut it out of the white felt. And then the backpack. And the backpack, of course, gets cut out of the same color as the body. Okay. So we've got our three pieces. I'm gonna set the rice aside. That's really kind of the last step. So to do this, I'm gonna fold the felt in half. And it's put it there. Now you've got a couple of safety pin, or a couple of pins in here. You can just pin it to to make sure that your two body pieces are the same, exactly the same. We're going to pin that right through and we'll pin that right there. Okay. And then we're just going to cut around the whole thing. Being careful not to pin, to poke yourself with the safe, with the pins, the straight pins. So we just cut around the outside like that. If you'd rather hold down the pattern and trace it with a pencil or a marker, you can do that. But this way you don't have the marker. Let's do this this way. You don't have the marker, the marks on the fabric to worry about. Okay. And I think I cut my legs a little off, so I'm going to cut this in. So that they're the same. Okay, and just trim up that corner. And there we've got our two body pieces. So we take these pins out, stick them back in here so they don't get lost or dropped or stepped on. Okay, so we've got our bodies, set those over there. And then we only need one of the backpack. So we'll take this, take one of our pins, put it through there, and then cut out the backpack. You want a pretty, a fairly sharp pair of scissors for this. Felt can be difficult to cut through. And be ready for the fuzz because felt, when you work with felt, it always leaves fuzz behind. Careful not to put that pin through your thumb while you're doing this. Okay, so we've got our backpack. Okay. 
And then finally, set these scraps aside. We take our visor, put the pin through. Actually, I'm going to do this so that if I want to, I can use the other. So do that and cut out the visor. All of these instructions are very well lined out, laid out on the instruction sheet that came with your kit. Okay, so setting that aside, put the pin back in here for safekeeping. You may decide you want to use those pins later in the dot mandala. So we'll put our patterns over here and we're going to keep these because you never know, you might want to make another one. So we've got our two bodies, two body pieces, we've got our visor, and we've got our backpack. And if you want to trim it up to make sure it's the shape that you want and the size that you want. I just drew them freehand for the pattern. Okay. So our first step is going to be sewing the backpack and the visor on the two pieces. So we'll start with the visor. To do this, you're going to need your needle and your needle threader and some of your thread. So open up the thread. Okay. We're going to take a Good long piece and cut it. So, taking your needle and your needle threader, it has this little diamond of wire. You're going to put that through the eye of the needle. Okay? Hold that. Whoop, not the whole thing, just the diamond. Holding that there, we're going to take our thread and put it through the diamond, okay? So we've got the needle threader through the eye of the needle and the thread through the diamond. And we just take and pull that through and ta-da! And then just slide your needle threader off and set that aside, you'll want that again. And we've got our needle is threaded, okay? So, We are going to take our ends and tie them together in a knot. Okay, and then trim the knot, not too close, but fairly close off. Okay, so we've got our needle threaded and we've got the knot. Let's learn how to applique. That's what this is called. Applique is just joining. So we're going to take our needle and we're going through both pieces. And we'll just start up here at the corner. Okay, right on the very edge, just through the, actually not through both pieces, just through the orange one at the, at the start. Okay, up through here, all the way through. And these are going to be back to back. So it's perfectly fine that you can see the knot there. We'll learn how to applique without seeing the knot when we do the next one. So, and we're gonna do, go. so we're going into the white, through both, and then back up through that same hole, okay? And pull. So there we have our first stitch, and we'll learn how to blanket it next. Okay, so there's our first stitch. Now, we're going to go same distance down here, through both, up through the edge, take your thread, pull that needle through, over 
and behind the needle and pull it up through. Okay. Being careful not to knot your thread as you do it. And there you have your first blanket stitch. Okay, it goes stitch across, stitch across. So then the same thing, same distance down and over. Careful, your needle is sharp through the, through both. Whoops, nope, take that back. I did that backwards. Uh oh. So in this case, we take our thread and just pull the thread and it should pop the needle back through, okay? Now you know how to fix a stitch gone wrong. So try that again. Through here and up to the edge, take your thread behind the needle, pull the needle through. Okay? Always pull in the direction that you're stitching. So same distance down, same distance over, through both, back up through the orange at the edge, thread over, pull the needle through. And your stitches don't have to be perfect. You can see that mine aren't. This is a really good way to practice sewing. So same distance down, same distance over, through the white, up through both at the edge. Okay, so we're just going to go all the way around doing that. When we get to the corner, I'll show you, we're going to do thread over and down. And we're going to come up at the corner. And we're going to go over just like we normally would and pull it through. And then turning it, we're going to do the same stitch through that same hole to turn the corner. Okay. So we're going to, let's pull that towards the corner. So we're going to go back through that same hole, but we're going to come up next to it. And put the thread over, and this will bring the, the blanket stitch around the corner, which will be helpful when we're doing things like the corners at the feet, and even probably the corners at the top. Okay, so then we've got that little V stitch here at the corner. And then we just do the same thing. Just go over and down to here. If when you're starting you find it too hard to keep the two pieces together, you could use one of your straight pins to hold this on. Felt is fairly grippy, so if we were working with something like satin or even cotton, we would want to. So there we've got our blanket stitch. So then we're going to, again, go into the corner. Bring that behind. Take some practice. Okay. And then we're going to do the same thing. And make a V around that corner. and then just continue your way around until the whole thing is on. Okay. 
If you find that using the full embroidery floss is looking too over too bold for you, you can separate the embroidery floss. It's, it's six strands of thread. So feel free to split that in half and use three. I like the really bold look, especially for the Among Us, but your mileage may vary. The important thing when doing this is to not expect perfection. As you can see, I don't expect perfection. <laughs> and everybody's, whoop, everybody's will be a little different. Same little V. Okay. Let's get this corner down a minute. There we go. And we are almost to the end. thread over. There we go. And we're going to do the corner here. Thread over. And then finish it in that last That last stitch right there. Okay, then we're going to come up through the same stitch that we started with. Whoop. We're going to go into the same stitch that we started with and up through. Okay, so that we've got the blanket all the way around. And then to tie it off, we're just going to go back through into the back. Okay, so you can't really see it. I've got that one little corner that's popping out. And then we're just going to whoop, make a loop, tie the thread through tie it off and then cut it. Remember, this is going to be on the inside, so you're not going to be able to see it. So there you have your visor. Okay, so we'll set that aside. Now, another option that you have, if you want to use a smaller amount of thread, like I said, this is six pieces of thread, you could, give me all the options here, Tie a knot on one end of it, okay, so that it's not tied together. You've got that one is, is shorter, and then there's the longer one that has the knot in the end. And we're going to do that one for, I want to match these up first. We're going to do that one for the backpack, okay? So we're going to flip it over, put the backpack where it goes. And we are going to do the same thing all the way around the backpack. But I'm going to do it with a, with a, a smaller piece of thread, just a single piece of thread. So remember, we come up through the edge all the way, okay? And we go down. We come back up through. Now, the important thing when you're doing it this way is to not let this little short piece of thread pull back through. Okay? Wait, pull back. Okay, so I lost my step. So we're pulling up through. 
like that. Hang on to that thread so it doesn't go through. Okay, then go through and come up and go over and pull through, hanging onto that thread. And you can see it's not it's not as thick a piece of thread going around. It'll be a little bit more delicate stitching. Okay. So we are actually at the corner here. So I'm going to do a corner stitch. And then just do your same blanket stitch all the way around. You will get to the point where that second that second end is getting close to your work. So you just kind of slide your needle up through so that you keep a good distance between that second end, the unknotted end, and that. I kind of went around that corner without doing the corner stitch. I'm going to do one opposite here. Right. We'll start here and do this. And we'll do the corner stitch. So there's that. Got that little corner stitch there. And I'm just bringing it up the side to finish it. Red. There we go. As you can see, it takes practice. Now, if you find yourself having your stitches be all uneven, similar to mine, you can take a ruler. I'll show you when we 
get to the, the body. Um, you can take a ruler and lay it across and mark where you want your stitches to be. Just put, with a pen or a pencil, just put a little dot so that your stitches are exactly in the right place. I like things to be not perfect. So. It does take practice and this is a really good project to practice different stitches on like I said if you wanted to do just an overhand stitch or even for this one if you wanted to do um, just a straight stitch all the way around you could do all different stitches we're gonna do more sewing projects coming up so you will have a chance to practice different stitches so I'm gonna go around the corner here This last one, remember you go into the hole that you started and up through, bring your yarn or your thread over and pull that through so it completes the blanket all the way around. And pull it taut, and go down through the other side. And in this circumstance, we just want to loop it and make a knot and then cut it all right so we've got our two pieces one with a visor and one with a backpack now we're going to stitch them together so get the right sides out this is not going to be enough thread so we're going to re-thread our needle can find the end of my embroidery floss. Which is here. So there it is. It's on the floor. Okay. So we want a nice long piece of thread. This uses quite a bit of thread. You may not actually need both skeins of embroidery thread, but I thought better safe than sorry. So Just a reminder, take your, your needle threader and your needle and put the needle threader through the eye of your needle and take one end of your thread and put it up through that little wire diamond and pull it. Don't pull it too far. Okay. And then just take this and pull it back through the eye of the needle until you've got both ends through. And set that aside. I'm going to do this one with the double thread because I like the heavy look. So take your two ends, match them up. And knot them. Okay. And cut the knot off, leaving just a very small tail. And make sure your thread is even. So there we have our threaded needle. Now, we are going to start over here, and we're going to sew a blanket stitch all the way around until we get to here, at which point we'll stop and fill it with rice, and then we'll sew it back. We'll, we'll complete and sew it around, okay? So you really want to make sure you keep your edges together if you want to use your straight needles or your straight pins, even just one through the middle to keep them in place might help. Just be careful of that sharp, that sharp point. Don't sew yourself or don't poke yourself with it. Okay. So we're going to start over here. And to do this, we're going to go like this. 
Okay, so we're, we're going on to the inside. We're gonna, this is how far down we're gonna be. We're gonna go through. So our knot will be on the inside, okay? So we're gonna come up and around. And we're gonna do exactly the same thing. We're just gonna come up on the edge, okay? So through there, put your yarn over so your needle is coming up through it or your, th your thread. Okay, so there we have our first stitch. And it's through both sides. Okay, so then we just do the same thing. Just go through, except instead of coming up on the edge, you're coming up on the other, you're coming through on the other side. So we do this, put your yarn or your thread over. Making sure it's not knotting and pull it through both strands. Okay. Okay. So there we have our blanket stitch and pull over. Now we're doing our corner. So we're going to go through the same hole. I got that backwards. We're going to go through the same hole. Take your yarn, your thread, go over your, around the back behind your needle. Okay. Pull that through just like that. Okay. And then we go on. So we're going to go the same distance over. Your needle through. Put your thread behind it. And pull. Okay. This is a really sturdy stitch that will keep the two pieces together. When you're using the blanket stitch for joining, it really keeps the two pieces together and it will stop the rice from falling out. Okay. So we just continue that all the way around. You want to, at each stitch, you want to pull it not too tight, but you want it to be taut. You don't want it to be loose. And you want to keep your stitches fairly close together, especially for this part. Because again, you're, you're, you're making an enclosure for the rice. You don't want the rice to fall out. It would make a mess. You also don't want your stitches to be so big that they intersect in the middle. You want there to be a, 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 a line so that you can see the line of stitches around the legs. I may have come pretty close with making these pretty deep, but we'll see. Mainly because you want there to be room in the legs to put rice.
If you're not real confident in your sewing skills, you could take your, your um, scraps of felt and practice this stitch before you actually get started with this project. That way you can kind of get a feel for it. Okay, we're at the corner. So I'm just gonna do a quick V at each of the corners of the legs. Okay, so I've got the V there. And then I'll do a stitch here. But as I was saying, if you wanted to use your scraps and just kind of practice, it's not a bad idea. Okay, and then I'm gonna do a V here. a little like Frankenstein, but that's all right. I like Frankenstein. Remember, if it looks loose, give it a little tug to keep that stitch taut. Okay. If you get a knot while you're working, don't pull it tight. Very carefully, you want to loosen the knot. Just kind of by pulling on the thread, okay? Don't pull it tight because it'll, be, it'll become impossible to get out. Okay. Be careful not to sew your legs together. Okay, so here we are at the corner. Whoop. So we got the one, and now we're gonna do the same thing and come up there. Okay. Make sure you're keeping your stitches taut throughout. 
see. Okay. This uses a deceptively large amount of thread. Okay, and back at this next corner. We are on the home stretch. Work through with the thread behind. And go through with the thread behind. Might actually have enough thread to get this done in one. Maybe. If you don't put your thread behind when you're doing it, not only do you not get that nice blanket stitch across, it there's no nothing to hold the rice in. So you'll rice everywhere. can take the pin out. It's not going anywhere now. Okay, so we're going to pretend I am out of thread and need to um, continue on with new with new thread on the needle. So to do that, you finish your stitch. And then you're going to cut off a long piece. You want to leave it so that there's enough for a long piece and tuck it down inside. Okay? Like that. Then we're going to rethread our needle. Finding the end of the thread. See, this is, this is a case of I pulled the thread too tight. And I think I've got a knot. Nope, it is going to come out. Okay. So let's add more thread to the needle. One more time. Take our little needle threader and our needle. Put that through there. Poke your thread up through. And then pull your needle threader through. Okay. Tie your ends off. Tie in the knot. Cut off the tail until it's pretty close to the knot. So then for this, we're going to go inside and we're going to come back out through that same hole, that same last hole here. Okay. So the knot's on the inside. All right. Then we're just going to continue on. And put the thread through here, or the needle through here, with the thread behind it and pull up and keep it taut. Thread through, thread behind, keep it taut. Needle through, whoop, thread behind, keep it taut. So we're going to go right up to the corner.
Okay, so we've got a good size hole here to put rice in. So we're going to take our whole, our rice and very carefully, we're going to pour it in. Okay. And then you want to kind of shake it so that you get rice down into the legs. Okay, just kind of work that down in there. Just kind of see how I'm kind of maneuvering that rice down in there. So you want rice down in both legs. So hold that, give it a good shake. Life does not want rice. This is one of the reasons you want to not have your stitches too close together down the legs. I think I can force a little bit of rice. Oh, yeah, there we go. A little bit of rice down in there. Okay. See, even with me working the rice down into the leg, it's not coming out, which is nice. That means I did a true blanket stitch. So I've got rice down all in there. You want to fill it up. You want it nice and full of rice. Okay. I'm just actually going to use in my hand. It's not a bad idea to have a broom on handy when you're doing this craft. Most crafts have a damp cloth. This one, you want a broom or a dust buster or a vacuum cleaner. Okay, so we get that nice and full of rice. And then we're going to finish off our blanket stitch. He's cute. Put the rice aside, brush the rice off to the side, not off to the floor, just all of our scraps off to the side. Okay, now making sure that last stitch that you left off with stays tight and holding, <laughs> holding your two pieces together with this hand so that the rice doesn't spill out on you. We continue along with our blanket stitch. Okay. And now we're at the corner, so I'm going to do V, going back through the same one with the thread behind and coming up over here, okay? And then we'll finish it off across the top. tend to get twisted. Okay, and then for our last stitch, we're just going to connect those two again. So go back up through like that. Okay. And just for good measure, we're going to do one more. OK, 
Okay, so we've got the blanket stitch all the way around. You can kind of maneuver the rice, you can see. Okay. And then to tie it off, we're just going to loop through underneath one of those stitches. And again, put the, put the thread over the needle and pull it tight. And then we're going to do that again. Okay. Put the thread over the needle and pull it tight. And then cut it off pretty close to that knot. It's going to have a little tail. And there we have our Among Us hand warmer. Now, you don't really have enough to make two hand warmers out of this. It's close. Oh, it's very close. You might actually have enough to make two hand warmers out of what I've given you. You probably don't have enough rice. You might have to use some other rice. I know there's enough of the white. Okay? So to use your hand warmers, you want to put it in the microwave for 15 seconds. Okay? And then kind of go by feel like this to see if it's warm enough. And then you can use it. All right? It also makes a pretty neat um, kind of a stress, stress ball. Okay? So there you go. All right, I'm going to clean up my mess. I'll be back for some final words. Well, thanks for joining me today. I hope that you had fun making your gorgeous dot mandala painting and also a very cute and very handy uh -huh, hand warmer. Remember, 15 seconds in the microwave and check it. Kind of squoosh the rice around. Don't burn it. Oh, I think I never did show you the back. There's the back of this backpack. Okay. So thanks for joining me. My name is Lori. I'm the teen librarian at Manlius Library. And you can find me here every other Thursday on the Manlius Library YouTube channel at 3 o'clock for a new craft and art project. Registration for the next one has opened and we'll be making DIY wands with a dowel and some clay and some painting and design. And we'll also be doing a gorgeous Northern Lights painting. So I hope you can join me. Have a great day. Stay cozy. Happy reading.